KFI Los Angeles. Spellbound. David O. Selznick presents Ingrid Bergman and Gregory Peck in the screen's most masterful achievement in suspense. Alfred Hitchcock's Spellbound. See Spellbound today. Grauman's Chinese, Lowe's State, Fox, Uptown. The Jack Benny Program, presented by... L-S-M-F-T. 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 That's right. You bet. And how? Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. At 49, American. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Here's what Mr. Joseph Cuthrell, independent tobacco auctioneer of Kinston, North Carolina, said. No cigarette is any better than the tobacco that's bought for it. And at market after market, I've seen Lucky Strike consistently buy fine tobacco. Tobacco that is sweet as a nut, better aroma, thoroughly ripe and thoroughly mellow. So when it comes to my own cigarette, I naturally choose Lucky's. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the star of our program, a man who has successfully run the gamut of show business from A to Z, Jack Benny. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was the nicest introduction you've ever given me. And you're absolutely right. My career has covered show business from A to Z. From actor to zombie. (laughs) Mary, that wasn't a nice thing to... Mary, what's a zombie? A zombie is a man who came to a fork in the road. He went one way and his blood went the other. (laughs) What? That's right, Jack. A zombie is a man with hollow eyes, a vacant stare, and although he's really dead, he still walks around. (laughs) So that's... Mary, how many times have I told you not to mention Fred Allen on this program? (laughs) I mean, especially so early. Let me get rolling first. Oh, Jack, you and Allen, I think it's about time you two stop picking on each other. Well, it isn't as simple as that. This grudge goes way back to our vaudeville days. Alan was always mad because the audience used to throw things at him and they never threw anything at me. What are you talking about? You learned how to play tennis by hitting the tomatoes back with your violin. <laughs> tennis, Mary, you know that isn't true. Then why did they book your act into Forest Hills? They, w- <laughs> they wanted a little music because Helen Wills was moody. <laughs> And live with me, will you, sister? <laughs> All right, what are you laughing at? People don't throw things at well, you. They don't. Look what happened a few weeks ago when you played your violin at the Hollywood Bowl. Mary. At the end of the concert, you had so much fruit in your hair, you looked like Carmen Miranda. <laughs> oh, stop making up a lot of things. Come in. Mr. Benny. Yes? I'm from the San Fernando Valley Gazette. Oh, are you, uh... Are you a reporter? Well, what do you think I am with this pencil in my ear? A desk set? (laughs) I always have to run into him. I don't... Well, what is it you want, Mr., uh, Mr.... Schlagelmeyer. (laughs) Schlagelmeyer? When you say that, smile. (laughs) Oh. My paper sent me here to get a story about that contest you mentioned last week. Well, Mr. Schlagelmeyer, I don't know any more about that contest than you do. Right now, I'm waiting for my press agent to come over and give us all the details. Oh, well, then I'll hang around and take a few notes. Well, we're trying to do a program, so why don't you just sit down, Mr. Schlagelmeyer? Westbrook Schlagelmeyer. (laughs) Oh, 
All right, all right. <laughs> you know, Mary, people have been phoning me all week about this contest. Well, Jack, what kind of a contest is it going to be? I wish I knew. The whole thing is Steve Bradley's idea. Imagine me giving away $10,000. I can't imagine it either. <laughs> that would jar San Fernando right out of the valley. <laughs> Smogglemeyer, please. Anyway, it isn't that I care about the money. Uh... I believe that, Jack. I think the whole idea about you being cheap is just a gag. Certainly. A gag, huh? Let me tell you something, Don. Jack doesn't trust anybody. What? When he goes to bed at night, he puts his money in his mouth and rubs alum on his lips. <laughs> I only did that once. <laughs> Now, let's get on with yeah, the... Pardon me. How do you spell alum? A-L... Schlagelmeyer. <laughs> it's not for publication. Oh, Jack, what are you worried about? He's from such a small paper, the San Fernando Gazette. That has no circulation. I beg your pardon, madam. My column is syndicated throughout. Throughout what? Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop among them. <laughs> Listen, Schlaggy, I have a 93-year-old grandmother who has better circulation than you have. <laughs> Now, please, let us get on with the program. Phil, uh, get your band ready, and we'll have a... Phil! Huh? You talking to me, Jackson? Yeah, it's time for your band number. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Jackson, but you know how it is with these mystery magazines. You start reading, and then you can't put it down. Oh, you're reading a mystery magazine. What's the name of it? Who's Gordon? Who's Gordon? Yeah, see, it says so right here on the cover. Phil, that's House and Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Phil, just play a number, will you? Okay, ya? Jackson, okay. But first, I'd like to know more about that contest. What's it all about? Phil, I don't know what it's about myself. It seems some silly idea my press agent has. He wants me to give away $10,000. Jack giving away $10,000 yeah. is like trying to strain the overalls out of Mrs. Murphy's chowder. <laughs> no, stop. I wouldn't say that, Livy. I was out with Jackson the other night, and he picked up the check. He did? Yeah, he looked at it, added it up, it was correct, and handed it to me. <laughs> now, listen. Don't get conceited, Phil. He does that with everybody. All right, kids, all right. Are you through? No, I've got one. You sit down. <laughs> You're just mad because my haircut is rounder than yours. <laughs> it is not. Now, will you please be quiet and let us get on with the... Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. Is my daddy there? Your daddy? Oh, this must be Phil Harris's little girl. How are you, darling? Fine. And how's your mother? She's fine, too. Right now, she's in the living room sewing. Sewing? Oh, is Mommy making you a cute little dress? No, she's mending the rip on Daddy's pool table. <laughs> Oh, oh, I see. Can I talk to my daddy now? Yes, darling. F Phil, it's for you. It's your little daughter. Oh, thanks, Jackson. Hand me the phone. Hello, honey. Hello, hotshot. <laughs> Look, how come you call me while I'm on the air, honey? Well, Mommy made me call. She said I have to tell you I was a bad girl today. No. Yeah. <laughs> Phonographs and I pushed over a whole bunch of records. But, baby, I've told you dozens of times never to go near those recordings. Now, did you break any of them? Yes, I broke 26 records of. That's what I like about the sound. <laughs> oh, honey, that's awful. I broke the mind in the pot that goes ham hocks and turn up greens, you and me and New Orleans, and that's what I like about the sound. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir, that's my girl that said that. <laughs> you know, darling, when you were a little tiny baby, I used to sing you to sleep with that song. Uh-huh, I could hardly wait to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you better hang up now, sweetheart. All right. Oh, Daddy, I've been listening to the program, and is Mr. Benny really going to give away $10,000? Yes, darling, I think so. This I gotta see. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you'll find out. Look, darling, you better hang up now. And remember, your date, Big Daddy Wubs, your itty bitty babykins. Oh, Daddy, you're so silly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, goodbye, honey. Goodbye, hot shot. <laughs> Gee, she must be a cute kid. She certainly is, Jack. I saw her the other day at the farmer's market with Alice. They were buying a head of cabbage. Oh, gee, Libby, I wish I hadn't heard that. Now I know what I'm going to get for Christmas. <laughs> a head of cabbage for Christmas? That's ridiculous. No, it ain't. I've got everything else. <laughs> You got a cabbage head, too. <laughs> you know, Phil, I wish I'd had a chance to talk to Alice because I know the perfect gift for Christmas. We know, Don, we know. A carton of Lucky Strike cigarettes. No, Jack, that's not it at all. What? Not a carton of Lucky Strike cigarettes? No, certainly not. But, Don, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Well, I know that, but the way I look at think, it is... Think, man, think. L.S. M.F.T. <laughs> I can't help it. My mind's made up. But, Don, what could be better for Christmas, for a Christmas gift, than a carton, <laughs> carton of Lucky Strike <laughs> cigarettes? Two cartons, one for each stocking. Oh, gee. Oh, boy. For a minute, I thought I was going to... Jack, stop looking at your social security. Security. <laughs> You know, it wouldn't hurt if we rehearsed this program. <laughs> Phil, go ahead and play a number, will you? Okay. okay, come on. Beyond the Rainbow from the newest Broadway hit, Are You With It? Played by Phil Harris and his 18 gentlemen. And now, folks... Thanks, Jackson. I'm glad you called my boys gentlemen. Well, I can't call them musicians. And... <laughs> and now, folks... Say, Jack, talking about Are You With It, didn't two of your writers write that show? Yeah. Well, you ought to be proud. What are you mad about? Look, I give them the summer off. They go to New York, write a hit show, come back and make my life miserable. What do you mean, Jack? Every time they come in with a radio script and I happen to say that joke isn't funny, they tear out the page and jam it down my throat. <laughs> they can stop already. I'm getting so round, so firm, so fully packed. <laughs> hmm. When they say that's a belly laugh, they're not kidding. <laughs> Well, Jack, if you feel that way about your writers, why don't you get rid of them? I can't. They've got me signed for two years yet. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, pardon me. How do you spell throat? Schlag, will you please sit down? <laughs> now what? Hello? Hello? I'd like to get some information about the contest you talked about last week. Look, fella, I don't know anything about the contest yet. I've got to wait until my press agent gets here. Well, when you get all the dope, will you please call me at MGM? Oh, oh, Metro Golden Mayor? No, Moe's Gypsy Motel. <laughs> Look, just listen in and you'll hear it. Goodbye. Wish people wouldn't bother me in the middle of a show. I'm going to tell the operator not to let any more calls come through. Oh, Mabel, what is it, Gaitrin? 
Look at your switchboard. Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Oh, yeah. I wonder what Lady Esther wants now. <laughs> I'll find out. Yes, Mr. Benny? All right. No more calls unless they're important. What? No, I'm busy tonight. <laughs> Say, Mabel, I wonder what kind of a contest he's going to have. Yeah, I can't imagine Mr. Benny giving away $10,000. Neither can I. I'll bet he marries the winner. <laughs> but supposing a man wins it? If I know Mr. Benny, he'll dress up like Charlie's aunt, have an early ceremony, and make a quick trip to Reno. <laughs> Yeah, I'll bet he would. Say, Gertrude, I wonder what Mr. Benny puts on his lips. Why? I went out with him once, kissed him goodnight, and I couldn't open my mouth for three days. (laughs) 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 Why, Mabel Flap Saddle, you just made that up. (laughs) No, Gertrude, it's the truth. Cross my switchboard and hope to dial Van Johnson. (laughs) Gee, Van Johnson, what a face. Two baby blue eyes gazing out through a cluster of beautiful freckles. (laughs) Stop talking about it. My nostrils are twitching. (laughs) You know, Gertrude, he's the answer to... National Broadcasting Company. I'm sorry, but Mr. Benny cannot be disturbed. You're welcome. Oh, for heaven's sake. Hello? You had a call, Mr. Benny, but I didn't let them disturb you. (laughs) Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. (laughs) Hmm. That Mabel Flap Saddle is so silly. Hasn't got a brain in her snood. Say, Jack, I wish your press agent Steve Bradley would get here. I- I'm kind of anxious to know about that contest. So am I. I can't understand what's keeping... Oh, my goodness. How many times do I have to tell him, tell that operator to... St- Look, if you don't stop calling, I won't take you dancing anymore. Oh, boss, come down! <laughs> Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Now he tells me. What do you want, Rochester? I called to tell you there's been a little excitement here at the house. Excitement? What happened? Well, the milkman turned his truck into our driveway and it got loose from him and ran all over the front yard. Did he hit anything? You know that big willow tree by the house? Yes. Well, it's really got something to weave about now. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Then he bounced off the tree and knocked over the bird bath. The bird bath? Yeah, and I just hung up clean guest house. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it. What else happened? Then he crashed into the front of the house and broke milk bottles all over the place. You mean my front lawn is covered with broken milk bottles? Milk bottles, policemen, and cats. <laughs> Holy smoke, I can imagine what my lawn looks like. Yeah, you ought to see those cats lapping up the milk and spitting out the grass. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. Not only that, a Cocker Spaniel ran up on the lawn and jumped right into the middle of everything. Good. Did the Cocker Spaniel chase the cats off? Chase them off. They're using his ears for napkins. (laughs) Rochester, stop being funny. Do you really want me to? No, no. Go on. (laughs) Anyway, I don't believe a word of this. It's true, boss. It happened about two hours ago. Well, what's on the lawn now? Broken bottles and fat cats. <laughs> Roll them off and I'll be home right after the broadcast. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, that is. I never saw anything like it. Every time I leave the house, something happens. What happened now? A delivery truck got loose on my front lawn and broke about a hundred quart bottle. No. No, Jackson. No, no. Phil, it was milk. Oh. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't worry you too much in there. Anyway, when I get home, I've got a lot of things. Oh, come in. Hi, buddy. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Bradley. Steve Bradley. Well, Steve, it's about time you got here. I've been up in the air all week about this contest idea of yours. Now, will you hear this? Sit down, everybody. Sit down. Let me do the talking. Now, about this contest, Benny, this is the greatest thing to hit radio since L.S. was introduced to Wayne F.T. 
All right. All right. What is it? Uh, pardon me. How do you spell MFT? Quiet, Sly. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. All right, listen, Benny, and listen carefully. Yes, yeah. What's the contest? I'm coming to that. Now, for years, programs have been having contests. They ask the listeners to write letters on why I like this, why I like that, why I like so and so, why I like such and such. People are tired of that stuff. I got something brand new, something that people will enjoy. All right, what is it? We're going to ask people all over this country to write in letters in 25 words or less. Yes? Telling us why they can't stand Jack Benny. (laughs) What? Steve. Steve, would you mind repeating that? Gladly. We're going to ask people to write in letters finishing this simple sentence. I can't stand Jack Benny because... (laughs) Steve Steve, look at me Look at me Have you lost your mind? Have you gone crazy asking people to do that? Why, people like me They love me Now, wait a minute, Betty, wait a minute What? How many people listen to you every Sunday? Well, about... About 30 million And how many people are there in the United States? Well, about a... A hundred and thirty million? There you are. That means that a hundred million people don't like you. (laughs) What? A hundred million people don't like me? And that's only in this country. (laughs) But, Steve... Steve, you mean to say that a hundred million people don't like me? A hundred million and one. (laughs) Huh? Don't let this smile fool you. Slob. How do you spell fool? Sit down. Get your Benny, this contest will sweep the nation. But, Steve, gee, I don't mind if people write in letters why they like Jack Benny, but you've got that awful phrase in there, I can't stand Jack Benny. I mean, can't stand is too hard. Hey, Jackson, how about despise? You stay out. <laughs> Mary, Mary, you talk to Steve, will you? Tell him how crazy this whole idea is. I, I can't do a contest like that. Oh, well, wait a minute, Jack. Maybe it's not so bad. At least it's different. But, Mary, all those people saying they can't stand me. Well, look at Fred Allen. He's been saying that for years. <laughs> well, he knows me. I mean... <laughs> I mean, Allen, he should know better. But, Jackson, there are a lot of other people that feel like Fred Allen does. Certainly. Now, this will give them a chance to put down on paper what they've been thinking for 14 years. And for that, for that, I should give away (laughs) $10,000? I've got an old bridge lamp I'm not using. (laughs) I mean, wouldn't that be... No, no, Benny, it's got to be $10,000, and what's more, it's going to be in victory bonds. Oh. Well, I... I, I like the idea of victory bonds, but... Oh, Mary, I can't go through with a thing like this. Why not, Jack? I think it's a wonderful idea. Me too, Jack. I like it very much. I love it, but it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. I mean, it, it, I mean it's so horrible. I mean, Steve, give me the details again, will you? All right, listen. People write in letters. I can't stand Jack Benny because... In 25 words or less... Do you think they can get it all in in 25 words? <laughs> yeah. All right, then I'll write 50 words. 50 words? Well, that lets me out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This, this sounds so ridiculous. $10,000 for writing a letter... I can't stand Jack Benny because... Jack, put down that pencil. You can't be in it. (laughs) Can't they write it in on dollar bills or something? (laughs) Well, if I'm going to give away victory bonds, I've got as much right to try and win as anybody else. Anyway, I'm not going through it. Oh, yes, you are. Go ahead, Wilson. Read that announcement I gave you. But, Steve, see, let's talk it over a little it's more. too late for that. Go ahead, Wilson. Read it. Oh. Okay. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this contest is actually taking place and starts right now. But, Steve... Now, listen look. closely. Here are the details. To enter this contest, all you have to do is write a letter completing this sentence in 50 words or less. 
I can't stand Jack Benny because. But, Don... $10,000 in victory bonds will be awarded for the letters containing the best stated and most convincing reasons. Mary, do something, will you? Quiet, Jack. I'm taking this down. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. The first prize will be $2,500 in victory bonds. The second prize, $1,500 in victory bonds. The third prize, a $1,000 victory bond. Look. And there are 50 additional prizes of $100 victory <laughs> bonds each. These are all par value bonds. They're worth their face value when you receive them. Look, how can I go through with this? I all mean... letters become the property of Jack Benny, and no letters will be returned. The decision of the judges will be final, and the supreme judge will be the Honorable Fred Allen. <laughs> Fred Allen? And his decision will be final. Oh, no. No, I mean, how, how can they do this to me? I'm really a nice guy. I grow flowers. I, I, I pat little kids on the head. I give milk to cats. How can they do this to me? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this contest is open to everybody except the employees of the American Tobacco Company, its agents, the National Broadcasting Company, and Jack Benny's relatives. <laughs> My father will kill me. This is awful. I mean, I... All you have to do is complete this sentence in 50 words or less. I can't stand Jack Benny because... Oh, my God. Then mail your letter to the Jack Benny Contest, Hollywood 28, California. Don. Remember, the Jack Benny Contest, Hollywood 28, California. This contest is subject to all federal and state laws and regulations. The termination date of the contest will be announced on a subsequent program. Oh, wait a minute, Don. Suppose there's a tie. Yes, yeah, Steve, suppose there's a tie. That's impossible, Benny. People can't stand you for different reasons. <laughs> I know. But... In case of a tie, duplicate prizes will be awarded. <laughs> duplicate prizes? <laughs> Mary, do Phil, say something. Okay, play, boys. I ought to have my head examined. How do you spell examine? Oh, sit down! Ladies and gentlemen, thousands of thoughtful and grateful Americans are giving Christmas presents to hospitalized servicemen this year. There's one important thing to think of in selecting a gift. It should be appropriate. How can we determine what's appropriate and what isn't? By consulting the camp and hospital committee of your local Red Cross chapter. They'll tell you what types of gifts will best fit the needs of the men. And please remember, if you're mailing the present, do it by December 10th or earlier, if possible. Jack Thank Benny you. will be back in just a minute, but first, here's my good friend, L.A. Speed Riggs. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. That's it. L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. You said it. L-S-M-F-T. This fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, out of middle of 49, American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. All day, American. And this is Basil Risedale for Lucky Strike. L.S.M.F.T. L.S.M.F.T. L-S-M-F-T. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Phil. Phil, I'll let rub his wrist while you pour that cold water on his forehead. Okay. Oh. He's coming around, Phil. Do you feel better, Jack? Yes, I guess so. Say, look, Jackson, 3,000 letters came in yesterday telling why they couldn't stand you. That's my regular fan mail. That don't count. <laughs> Mary, I'm too weak. You say it. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Don't delay, folks. Write those letters tonight. Finish the sentence, I can't stand Jack Benny because, in 50 words or less. And mail it to the Jack Benny Contest, Hollywood 28, California. The 
This is the National Broadcasting Company.